Hi everyone, and welcome back to my studio. I'm Heather Noble, and today I will be showing you how to make a double envelope border to hide all the ends of your mosaic crochet rows. But I will be using a front post double crochet stitch for the first round rather than a slip stitch. I've always found slip stitches to be hard to work with, so I've researched other methods and pulled together some techniques that I like the most. I think you're going to enjoy this process much better than the slip stitch method. Let's get to it. I'll be using this swatch of a Siberian Husky from my dog breed series. Funny story about this pattern. Here's my first attempt at the design. It's pretty true to the image I purchased, but every time I looked at it, I saw a Siberian unicorn. <laughs> so I reworked the pattern and gave it a different set of ears. To start off, we need to tie the ends together two at a time. I've already done this most of the way around, I just have a few knots to go. Take two ends and tie them together with a basic knot. This ensures that the rows won't unravel through wear and tear and washings and such. Now I'm trimming the ends to about one inch in length to make them more manageable to work with. I've found that going down a hook size for the border gives it a better overall finish. Before I learned this tip, I had blankets with wavy edges. I crocheted the body of this swatch with my Tulip F 3.75 millimeter hook and will do the border with my E 3.5 millimeter hook. I chose this blue yarn for the border just because it shows up well on camera. This technique works best if you start on the back side of your project, and I always pick a spot on the bottom to start my round. I try to have invisible joins, but just in case it's not as perfect as I'd like, the bottom is a more inconspicuous location to start or join a round because our eyes are trained to view an image from the top down. So I'm going to insert my hook from the front and go around the post and out the other side, and then I'm going to join my yarn. Now, I like to make a standing double crochet rather than chaining two here because it makes the join much more seamless. So first I pull up the loop to the height of a double crochet and holding on to the loop with my finger, I wrap the yarn once around the hook. Now I yarn over and pull that loop around to the front, and I yarn over again and pull through both loops. Now I'm going to crochet front post double crochet stitches, inserting my hook into the same space where my last stitch finished. I want to show you the front and back sides here so you can see how the stitches lay. Here on the front side, each post will have a loop directly below the top or V of the stitch. This will be a helpful visual marker when working on the front side of your project later. I've reached the end of the row and I work all the way to the edge past the last post. For the corner, I work a front post double crochet, chain two, and then another front post double crochet around the same post. Now working down the side of the project, use the color changes to help guide you around the posts, which are actually the ends of the rows themselves. Those pesky tails will get in the way for this first round, but it gets easier as you go.
I've completed the first edge and wanted to show you how the stitches look on both sides. I had to stop and check the front side occasionally to make sure I hadn't skipped a row and that all the stitches were in the right spot. Here I am at the end of the first round. You can join with a slip stitch and chain two to start the next round, or you can pull up the loop to the height of a double crochet and make a standing double crochet like I showed previously. Starting in round two, crochet a regular double crochet into each stitch. At the corner, work a double crochet, chain two, double crochet sequence into the chain space. Repeat this entire process on the front side of your work. Insert your hook directly below the stitches you created from working on the back side. They will be your guide for the front side, and this will ensure that you have the exact same stitch count for both sides. Once both sides are finished to the width you desire, it's time to join them together. I like to place stitch markers at the corners to help keep everything lined up. Starting at the bottom corner, join the yarn and crochet three single crochets into the chain space. Now with the first stitch along the edge, we're going to start slip stitching. Work into the back loop of the front stitch and the front loop of the back stitch and slip stitch the border together. Continue all along the edge until you get to the corner. At the corners, work three regular single crochets through both chain spaces. And here's the final look. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.